Hey you guys, guys and bumps, and welcome back to A Few Bad Men. Alright, today I'm going to be doing a little bit more of what the newspaper said about the casting of a Razor War. Today we're going to be talking about what they said about Salvatore Marizano. Alright, so the they didn't have anything actually on the, the, the day of the death. Everything came out on the, uh, September 11th. So the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, September 11th, 1931, says... Racket killing, diary found, lists a judge. All right, it says, clue may lead to uncovering gigantic U.S. alien smuggling plot. So they're, they're on the, the fact that he was a smuggler. All right, so uh, let's see. A small black diary found beneath the windows of the office where Salvatore Maranzano was slain yesterday afternoon may lead not only to his slayers, but also uncover the nationwide ramifications of a gigantic alien smuggling plot. Maranzano was put on the spot when three men invaded his office on the ninth floor of the Grand Central Building and fired a volley of bullets, which killed him instantly. Uh, it says, In the confusion, the slayers effected their escape, but it was believed that in their haste, one of them dropped the diary, which those investigating the case believe contains dynamite evidence against many officials. All right, so they're talking about the judges. Being in the jail. So also, a judge was found in the. Okay, let's see. Um, judges mentioned the names of federal and state officials, politicians, lawyers, employees of the Nationalization Bureau, and a judge were found in his diary. Uh, said it was picked up by a small boy between 46th and Park Avenue, directly under the window of the office where Marizano was slain. Uh, says later, it was revealed that the City Court Justice Charles Booth of Yonkers. And when he was asked about the entry of his name in the book, he declared he had no idea how it got there. It's a mystery to me, he said. I don't know anybody by that name of Maranzano, and I'm not under any subpoena in any case in which he may be involved with the federal government. I have ordered a great many, depo I have ordered a great many deportations of undesirable aliens. Uh, goes at page two. All right, so... Page two continues. He said, "It's entirely possible that it's entirely possible that he represented some of these men." All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So this is cool right here. So the police pay particular attention to one notation, which they believe has direct bearing on the slaying. This notation was dated September 10th, and it read, "It says call Maranzana, but they spell it M-A-Z-E-R-A-N-A." It says, uh, in quotations, obviously the victim's name is misspelled. 9 a.m. van, office, make call for money. So somebody was supposed to call Maranzano uh, at 9 a.m. in his office and make a call for money. So maybe it was one of the guys who dropped, one of the killers who dropped it. Okay, they say, uh, they talk about an extortion plot. They think that he may have been extorted because, uh, Oh, they said he may have been the victim of extortioners mentioned by federal agents in disclosing last week that they had discovered a huge alien smuggling ring that the heads of those organizations were being blackmailed. So the feds had something in there that, that either he was, that Marizano was being blackmailed or, or he was blackmailing somebody else. All right. They also found... Uh, Printed forms. It said a search of Marizano's office disclosed a quantity of printed forms of the Bureau of Immigration, Department of Labor, uh, and the police turned them over to agents of the Department of Justice to ascertain whether they were forgeries. Several detectives were sent to Buffalo, Chicago. All right. Um, said Marizano has for seven months been under investigation by federal authorities in the alien smuggling racket. Wow. So they were really looking at him as a smuggler more so than a, a bootlegger. Uh, they do say later on um, that the, the case holds a rum theory. He says police commissioner Mulroney said that after said this afternoon that the police still hold a theory that the killing resulted from a quarrel among members of a liquor ring. And uh, yeah, he said the group that Marizano was with made their money not only out of selling liquor, but smuggling narcotics and aliens. Then the murder may have been done over any one of these causes. 
Uh, so they do know a little something here. They said uh, he declared that Maranzano was the rival of Lucky Luciano. This is the first time I've seen Charlie's name in the papers as uh, Luciano. Every time I've seen his name in it, it's been Lucky Lucanier. Uh, but this is the first time they spell it wrong, but they say, you know, they, they, this is the first time I've ever seen them use that term. Uh, to head the gang, I said, uh, he was, Maranzano was a rival of Lucky Luciano to head the gang of the, oh, okay. So this is, all right, so he declared that Maranzano was a rival of Lucky Luciano to head the gang left leaderless when Joe the Boss Masseri, Masseri, they call him, was killed in Coney Island early this summer. I said, despite the fact that Luciano won out, Maranzano, according to Mulroney, was one of the organizers of a three-day fiesta staged in Coney Island August 1st, 2nd, 3rd. So that's the dates of the days that I didn't know um, when Maranzano had the, the three-day meeting which, which uh, put Luciano as the head of the Masseria family and, and named himself as Capital Tutti Capi. So that's August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1931. I'm learning some stuff here, so, all right. Okay, they're also talking about how Marizano had a pistol back in uh, 1925. All right, so two other men were killed on that day as well, uh, but they weren't necessarily part of this. A guy named James Luper Lepore, he was the grape king of the Bronx, and uh, he was killed while standing in the doorway of a barbershop at 24 Arthur Avenue. And another guy, Jacob Kiviat, 32 of 22 Pike Street. Uh, he was the leader of a clothing cutters union, and he was slain by two men. And he was as he was leaving his restaurant at 135 Norfolk in Manhattan, in Norfolk Street in Manhattan. All right. So here's, here's something else cool right here. So guess who else made the papers on November on September 11th, 1931? None other than Martin Goldstein, 25 of 1279 Avenue U, Harry Mayon, 27, of 2192 Fulton Street, Harry Strauss, 23, of 731 Hinsdale Street, and Abraham Brellis, or Abe Brellis, 25, of 399 Bradford. <laughs> These guys were in the paper so much uh, this year, and, and starting from this year, they were in the paper so much. But yeah, that's cool that you can, you know, you look around and you see other things that happened on those days. <clears throat> All right, so let's check another paper. All right, so the Brooklyn Citizen, September 12th, 1931. Oh, work for the police. Crimes of violence multiplied despite the efforts of police to put an end to them. Thursday added several to the number of homicides. And then it just goes on to say, four thugs invaded the office of the Eagle Building Corporation on the ninth floor of the Grand Central Building at 230 Park Avenue. Manhattan, forced the employees to line up with their faces to the wall and shot and stabbed to death Salvatore Maranzano at his desk. This is believed to have been a gang murder. It is reported that the victim was at one time leading the spirit in a ring of alcohol distilleries and is intimated that he has more recently been interested in the smuggling of aliens. That's all they say, that's it. You know, they don't really talk, the, the papers don't really talk about Maranzano too much. Uh, I think the next one, you know, uh, let me see. The Brooklyn Daily Eagle on September 14th. Maybe it's because he uh, he was he was a, a mafioso. The mafia is supposed to be a secret organization. Nobody's supposed to know that it even exists, let alone that you are the boss of it. So maybe that that was his plan. He didn't. He wasn't in the papers. So uh, the Times Union. September 20th, 1931. Again, they are on the illegal alien spin of this thing. Uh, how it says, uh, name of clerk and notebook of alleged smuggler makes reorganization likely. So he act, this, this murder actually shook up the Naturalization Bureau in Manhattan. <laughs> uh, yeah, they started to crack down on illegal immigrants after this and you know uh smuggling of immigrants after maranzano maranzano's death they, they don't really say too much more about it it's just more about the uh yeah it's just more about 
uh, his him going, you know, him him being a, a smuggler, an alien smuggler. All right. So, uh, here's another funny thing that I found in this paper, September twentieth, nineteen hundred thirty-one, in the Times Union. All my uh, Boardwalk Empire fans out there, they, there's a little uh, thing about Eddie Cantor in here. He's Eddie Cantor is holding a contest at this time. Uh, Twenty-five dollars was the first prize. It was a, a comedy contest. Uh, you had to write in and, and and submit your writing to the, the the Brooklyn Times Union or the Brooklyn Daily Times, actually. And uh, it says by writing a few words, you stand a chance of winning twenty-five dollars as first prize, ten dollars as second prize, or one of the three five-dollar runner-up prizes. And, and Eddie was the judge. All right, so. The Times Union, September 11th, 1931. They have a, a better understanding of the story. But it's not until page four. So, you know, like I said, Maranzano wasn't a, a big guy. So this one talks about um, how Maranzano was under investigation. And he was definitely connected with a nationwide alien smuggling ring. And... Uh, they talk about his his beef with, with, with Jordan Boss. All right. They said, uh, Police Commissioner Mo Rooney declared this afternoon's investigation tends to show the killing of Maranzana. Maranzana. That's why I couldn't find this one because they spelled his name differently. Had followed a fight for the throne of Jordan Boss Masseria put on the spot several months ago. Masseria was reputed leader of the Union Siciliana and several noted gangsters Desirous of becoming his successor, were conspicuous at a fiesta held August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at Coney Island, in the conduct of which Marizana was a moving figure. The fiesta is believed was held for the purpose of marking a gangland pact. Okay, so they kind of get it. They understand a little bit what's going on. Well, this is the police commissioner, so he would know a little bit more than, than what the paper's saying. So they're getting the information from, from the police commissioner. Uh, Marizana the commissioner asserted may have been jealous <laughs> may have been jealous of the high-handed gangland leadership of Saul Lucky Luciano they call him Saul police today are investigating a report that five or six days ago a building employee saw a man who looked just like Al Capone in the hallway <laughs> so that that's funny uh so they talk about how they uh uh Bobby Doyle Santucci they they, they he appeared in a lineup at Manhattan Police Headquarters today. Under questioning by police officials, Santucci admitted being in the room at the time of the shooting, but said he could not remember what brought about the quarrel. He told the police he had no knowledge of the identity of the killer. Santucci, who said he was a pugilist from 1917 to 1925, has been arrested three times for felonious assault, and he was arraigned today in court. Miss Saunders, the stenographer, told the police that three men burst into the office shouting, We're the police. They pinned Maranzano against the wall, she said, and one of the trio slashed him with a knife. Then the three backed away and fired five shots at him. Four bullets took effect. The police later found three pistols on the stairway near the second floor. All right, so that's more information than what we got in some of these other papers. All right, uh, but I think that's about it. I, I, I looked, I, I actually came back and put this part in. This is something I found after doing uh, the original audio for this. So I actually did find some more stuff. So that'll conclude the Castella Morese War, uh, what they said in the paper series. If I find anything else, I'll throw it back up. You know, I'll, I'll make a new video. But like I said, uh, it's, it's harder to find Maranzano stuff than it was to find Masseria stuff. Marizano just wasn't that presence outside of the underworld that Joe the Boss was and that Charlie Lucky was. All right? So listen, this has been A Few Bad Men. Keep your nose clean and don't take any wooden nickels. I see you in the funnies.